Hey, welcome. I thought that it would be helpful and fun to end the year by sharing my 2023 palette. I just wanted to highlight some of the colours that I've really been enjoying, what I have been carrying around with me. And although it's a travel palette and it's the palette that I take with me everywhere, as you can see by it being scuffed, it is also just the palette that I tend to use in my studio and the one that I tend to grab the most. So with no further ado, no judgment. <laughs> I'm just going to highlight all the colours that I have been using. I'm going to be swatching all of these in my Caddy Fat Book, which has 100% cotton rag paper. As always, I am curious to know like your own practices. Are there colours that you use all the time? Do you change your palette often? Or do you just tend to have one go-to palette? I find that I have like one palette that is my go-to that's this one and then I have like a number of palettes that are brand specific so if I feel like using that particular brand then I will get that out whereas this one in theory can have any any brand in it it's fine although they tend to be Roman Schmoll because they are the watercolors that I really love and enjoy so this first color is Roman Schmoll's Buff Titanium I find that it's just a really nice off-white color nice for like mixing for muddying things up nice for beach scenes for buildings just a, a general go-to happy urban sketching kind of color and this initial palette a lot of the colors you'll see are actually in the Roman Schmoll urban sketching palette and I've made a video highlighting that and reviewing that and I'll share it for you but I think that in part that is what I had in mind when taking this palette and creating this that I really wanted it to be versatile and to be something that I could use all the time at home or when urban sketching and thus I almost like modified that palette like slowly with time it evolved into this this is Roman Schmoll's Quinoctolone yellow which is a nice middle of the road kind of yellow so it will still get you some nice greens it will get you some nice oranges but it's not leaning like super orange or super green and then we have this color that I <laughs> I just keep running out of and this is Roman Schmoll's Quinacridone Gold Hue and I mean I love I love I love the color I love it especially like for greens I just add it to so many of my greens over and over and over again which is why it is always running out Roman Schmoll has two Quin Gold colours. One it calls Quin Gold Hue, the other one it calls Quin Gold. Both of them are technically hues because none of them are PO49. But the Quin Gold, which has PO48, is going to be discontinued if it hasn't already been discontinued, and I'll link the video for you. And the Quin Gold Hue has PR102 instead of PO48. So they've basically replaced that pigment that orange pigment that is going with a red pigment but still it's beautiful I've done a video kind of comparing all the Quinn golds that are going and um, comparing the two so that you can have a closer look from what I can say like the major major difference between the two is more so that the Quinn gold hue so the new one granulates whereas the old one didn't granulate as much or at all actually then this next one is golden ochre and this is one that I've kind of left in the palette from the Urban Sketching set. So it's almost like a, yeah, it's like a yellow ochre, raw sienna kind of colour, which is, again, really nice for landscapes and nice for mixes. The other thing is also, I think this doesn't lean as opaque as the others. And I'm always in two minds as to whether I should keep it or not, because I feel like I love Quinn Gold more, but they are different. <laughs> And they do make completely different mixes. So for now it stays. And this entire row is Roman Schmoll. I think it's just easier if I say that. Um, this colour is Quinn Magenta, which again is almost finished. This is a beautiful colour. Again, it was included in the Urban Sketching Kit. And I remember when I swatched it out in the Urban Sketching Kit, I was a bit confused as to why it was there. Because I was kind of like, it's a super bright, like pink. Like who's using that for Urban Sketching? But it's been such a helpful 
mixing color and obviously I love floral so for me it's ideal I also really enjoy mixing this with the quinacridone gold hue to make like peachy colors that's just a formula that I just go back to time and time again and a color that I go back to time and time again sometimes I'll try and use this next color in place of that but I do find that the magenta is really nice so this is cherry quin red which is really really nice it's still a pinky red like both of them are really pinks to be honest but this is like this is a bit more of a I guess a natural looking pinky red whereas this almost the quin magenta almost looks fluorescent this is a little bit more understated again we'll make some really nice mixes it's beautiful one that I had to replace and ran out of and then we have potter's pink me and potter's pink have had such a interesting relationship and I say that because like obviously when I first started watercolors I didn't like granulating watercolors <laughs> I just really didn't wasn't really into them and I also didn't really like potter's pink because I'm not gonna lie a lot of them were actually just brown so I didn't really see the appeal of them but I've come round to granulating watercolors because I do like the interest that they add and I have come round to Roman Schmoll's potter's pink because it is more pink than other potter's pinks if that makes sense i find that a lot of them are brown but this one is actually a bit pinky I don't tend to use it on its own i definitely tend to like using it in mixes and i think that that's where it shines especially if you want your mix to granulate then we have daniel smith's cobalt teal and it's funny this cobalt teal ish color is like i absolutely love in in gouache and that is why it made its way into this palette so i just think it's a really nice lovely caribbean <laughs> sea kind of color my only qualm with it is that it granulates but i know that that's normal for pg 50s so there's really not much that i can do about it and next we have roman schmall's sky blue which again was part of their you know urban sketching kit and this is such an interesting one because it's essentially a phthalo blue so pb 15 with pw6 with a white so when I saw that like initially on the package my heart kind of sank and I was like damn <laughs> you know I thought it was going to be pale and chalky and I honestly thought oh uh, it's going to be the first Roman Schmoll color that I actually don't like however when I actually swatched it out it's been all good and in fact even after I started making changes to the palette it remained because it is a color that I enjoy and it's just literally as the name says a nice and easy sky blue lay it down and that's it your sky's there so I haven't found it to be chalky at all or haven't had any issues I've modified the palette and still kept it with me the next color this is interesting I love this color I think it's absolutely beautiful I don't tend to use it as much and I don't know why every time i swatch it out i'm like i should definitely use it more but this is roman schmoll's ocean blue and it is absolutely beautiful it granulates wonderfully and i almost wonder if this swatch is going to do it justice but i hope it does because it just has some really nice almost like yellows and browns poking through when it starts to granulate it's just a really beautiful color almost like a, a special one thing that's going to be very apparent which i didn't fully appreciate until i started doing these <laughs> this swatching is that i have a lot of blues i just feel like like they sway the palette the most do you know what i mean like i, I guess maybe because i like greens as well but i almost feel like there are so many different kinds of blues like i don't have any warm reds and that's probably the one color that's missing from this palette but if i didn't have the right blue i just feel like it would throw all my colors off because they are all so drastically different so this is a phalo blue i believe it is daniel smith's phalo blue i lost my swatch card so i know that it's a phalo blue i'm almost 100 percent sure it's daniel smith's phalo blue super bright electric blue and when you water it down you can see the similarity between that and the sky blue because they're both phthalo blues then ultramarine which although it looks full is actually like this is i think third pass so it's a color that i just use all the time and it's roman schmoll's ultramarine intense just feel like ultramarine is such a good staple color it will make nice greens it will make nice purples it will make nice skies it will work in mixes it will work on its own so this will always stay in my palette <laughs> then next is 
cause in Dan Throne Blue. And I mean, I really love dark and moody blues. It's kind of no surprise. I also kind of like that it doesn't granulate. So I have the option of having granulating blues and non-granulating blues. And I just think it makes beautiful purples and it's just a beautiful, stunning color. Other fun thing about it being core is that core tends to move with water quite a lot. So it makes my greens, when I use it and mix it with my greens, it makes them extra special and gives them extra character because they just run around the page then i have roman schmall's mineral violet this is one of those colors that is absolutely beautiful but i don't tend to use quite as much but then when i swatch it i'm like yeah i can't, I can't let it go <laughs> so this may end up being 2024's palette as is like if i do make changes i will let you know yeah it's just so so nice it does granulate the only reason that sometimes i do think i could let it go is that in theory i could mix it myself like it's very much a convenience color so if i were to need space then in theory it could go in respect like despite it being really beautiful and I've made a video actually just highlighting how you can make your own granulating colors and I did recreate this I think I was trying to recreate Daniel Smith's mineral violet or or maybe Romish more ones basically they both use the same pigments so I was trying to recreate this color and I was able to do it so it's definitely a convenience mix that you can make on your own so this color here is Roman Schmall's hooker's green and I think it's beautiful it's going to stay on my palette. <laughs> it's one of my go-to greens because I feel like it's a really nice green. Although they call it hooker's green, really and truly to me, this is like a sap green. And that's why I love it because usually I almost always have a sap green in my palette. And that's basically what this is. In this palette, I find that Roman Schmall's actual sap green and sap green light are just... I don't know if they have PG7. I can't remember what's in it, but I just find them like quite artificial looking. Whereas the hooker's green, I feel like is bang on the money when it comes to looking like a nice natural green then next I have this beautiful color that again is one that I've just topped up because I ran out of and that is Roman Schmall's Aquarius green I love this green I think it's just so nice it granulates beautifully it almost like does all the work for me where really and truly I don't need <laughs> to do anything I could just put it down and it would look really really nice it is quite i find that it leans a little bit more towards olive so what i tend to do is quite often mix these two together to just kind of get a bit of a nicer natural looking green i will also mix this quite a lot of the time with like the indanthrone blue or with the ultramarine blue to just get different hues but really and truly if i wanted to i could just leave it as is then this this was a special edition this is jackson's um phalo green or emerald green or you know pg7 basically i added this why did i add this where was i going I think I added it for a trip like I kind of felt like this green would be really helpful to have for the trip and then after doing that I just realized the mixing potential of phalo green and it stayed on my palette since which is funny because it is such a garing like I feel like although phalo blue is clearly like a artificial punchy in your face blue I feel like I could use it and I can water it down and I can like mix it whereas I find the phalo green to be so punchy and artificial that I don't really tend to enjoy it but in mixes really nice <laughs> really really nice so that's why it stayed on the palette this next color is cypress burnt umber deep and i just feel like you know a, a burnt umber is a staple especially if you like doing landscapes but for most things landscapes botanicals is just really really nice i also like that it granulates i like the the grays that i can make by mixing it with ultramarine blue and so it remains a go-to color for me i was thinking about switching it out with one of roman schmall's newer browns like maybe getting a brown that's a little bit uh more red leaning like warmer but we'll see time will tell then this <laughs> this is a funny one because this is shadow violet the reason this is funny it's almost like i had it from the urban sketching palette and i didn't really think i would use it that much like maybe a little bit so I added shibish gray but I find that I really really like using it to mix and to make other things darker so it's just 
somehow become a color that I tend to mix into my greens instinctively. And initially, I actually, I think it happened by accident because the colors were quite dark and I didn't have my swatch chart. So I actually thought when they were dry that this was burnt umber. So I kept picking it up and I liked the greens I was mixing. And then it occurred to me that the greens were a little bit funny. Why? Because I was actually using shadow violet rather than burnt umber. But I liked it and thus it, it stayed. Then next to it here we have shabish gray and this is a beautiful stunning gray definitely one that i need to use more of and it's like a purple leaning gray that granulates beautifully and i guess it's because i've had i have both of these that's why i've managed to get away without having Payne's gray and then last but not least <laughs> we have etchers gold and this i mean i am slowly making my way through the palette because i have just used up so i've used up one half pan and this is the second half pan unfortunately as it stands at the moment you can't buy them um, open stock so if i want to get back my pure gold or royal gold then i have to buy the entire set so in the meantime, what I am doing anyway is just working my way through the golds because they are stunning. And then once I've made my way significantly through the entire palette, I will I will buy it again. But this is the, the second palette, the second half pan that's almost finished, basically. Ten half pans to go. <laughs> because I was running out of a lot of those colours, I actually got another set of the Aquarius Remish Moore palette just to show you Ponaptolone yellow is still there Pyro Scarlet is probably the one color that is actually missing from this palette and that's just because I don't have like a warm red and I don't tend to use warm reds often but I have found that when I need it it's kind of hard to recreate and sometimes I just try to make do with the cherry queen red but that might be a color that I bring back queen magenta is still there ultramarine intense is still there blue sky is still there shadow gray is still there sap green light I removed and instead replaced with hooker's green aquarius green is still there buff titanium is still there golden ochre is still there italian burnt sienna I removed because I just found I wasn't using it as much um and in preference I had the cypress burnt umber deep so this is the like the actual set and these are the colors that I have at the moment but I think the fun thing is to just take a look at your palette swatch it out see what kind of mixes and colors you can make have a look and see like which colors have the biggest dents in them and think about why because sometimes you end up well for me I end up painting quite instinctively without thinking about what colors I'm picking up and what mixes I'm making so it's always fun to look back and see like which ones have the biggest you know dips in them which ones do I just keep going back to time and time and time again and just to reiterate, my currently most used colours are Romish Moles, Quinacridone Gold, Quin Magenta, Cherry Quin Red, um, Ultramarine Intense, Cause in Downthrown Blue, and Romish Moles Hookish Green, Aquarius Green, and Shadow Violet, and also Etches Gold, which <laughs> I ran out of space to swatch. And what I want to do in the new year is just have a look at all the Romish more colours that I have, just all the watercolours that I have in general, to be honest, but starting first and foremost with the Romish small ones and just swatch them out and just figure out what kind of colours I want to to try in my new palette, like almost recreating it or just having a whole new palette for 2024, just because, I don't know, it's fun to play with colour, it's fun to experiment and there's just so many colours that I haven't yet tapped and I haven't really yet tried and I'm curious to see how it's going to change my art. So if you want to see like swatching videos and you want me to swatch out all of the Roman small colours, then let me know down below, especially if there's a colour group that you're most interested in and that you'd like me to start off with first. I have done a live stream about it where I swatched out all the yellows, all the blues, all the purples, the greens, the greys um, but I haven't done the earth colours as of yet but I'm thinking of doing like an edited series you know like I really just want to swatch them and mix them and just have a nice therapeutic relaxing swatching session so if that's the kind of thing that would interest you then by all means let me know but I thought it would be helpful for me to show you some of those mixes that I was talking about that I just tend to like do they are going to be primarily greens I can't even lie to you so this is just hooker's green on its own and I like adding some 
it's hard to speak and paint at the same time sometimes but essentially that is hooker's green on its own but i really do like adding that quinacridone gold hue to my greens and seeing how that changes them and i've done a whole separate video um of my kofi just swatching out greens and i think that video primarily was <laughs> focused on all the different mixes that i really enjoy doing that video in particular was focused on the mixes that i tend to like making with aquarius green but ultimately there's just so many different colors that you can make and i think ultimately it's about making the palette flexible to you if you love mixing oranges this is a terrible palette for you <laughs> If you love mixing greens, however, it might be a super interesting palette for you because I have six blues, essentially three yellows and three greens. So like you can imagine the array of greens is absolutely wild. So that's like the mixtures that I tend to do where my greens are quite like messy. So I'm putting the Aquarius green with the hookers green and a mixture of that plus the quinacridone gold hue. And then sometimes, so think that's beautiful but then sometimes I will also like to add that shadow violet like I've told you and just make that an even nicer dark green I don't know if it's weird but like you no know, I always look at my palette this way so when I have it this way it always takes me like a second to figure out what what exactly is going on are you the same does that happen to you too and I've just added some more can you see like shadow violet and look at how beautiful it almost looks like, like a purling green but with more character like i just absolutely love mixtures that i can get from this palette when it comes to the greens another one that i wanted to show you was one that i feel like everyone knew and nobody told me <laughs> about it but now that i know about it i kind of feel like it's my job to just let you know and that is taking phalo green which i've swatched there with the quinacridone magenta and just mixing the two together I don't understand how or why it makes this beautiful colour and this happened completely by accident. Um, I was colour swatching, it was actually a video that I made for my Kofi members where I was talking about different ways that I explore colour and in it I was basically saying how sometimes I like to explore colour by thinking like I'm going to focus on greens and just mix them and sometimes I'll just do like do it more strategically so irrespective of what colors i'm trying to mix i'll just mix through my palette so i was doing that whole like don't think about it just mix and then this started happening and i was like what is this but yeah this is why like this right here is why phalo green remains on my palette so that's like a really nice and interesting mixture that i just go back to time and time again and then it can also make some really nice dark blacks i don't tend to use blacks as often though i'm more times than not just doing either foliage or landscapes or you know um focusing on these kind of more natural colors with regards to the greens as well if you take burnt umber as well and add it to your greens then you can make some really nice dark greens. The other mixtures that I tend to make, if I just clean up here a little bit, peach-ish mixtures. So I normally take my Quin Gold with the magenta and get a colour like that. And then I just lighten it up a little bit, get like these nice light peachy tones. I just think they're really nice for my florals. And sometimes the Cherry Quin Red is almost like a more delicate ver version of that. So sometimes I'll use the Cherry Quin Red and water it down. Just try to make those kind of nice light peachy mixtures. So these are just some of the many, many, many mixtures that you can make. Like another one that I really tend to like going back to, so, which is green again, as you can imagine, is making greens, but this time adding um, in Danthrone Blue. And as you can see, like absolutely all different, all absolutely stunning. and you can mix all of them like you will have probably noticed i wasn't being super regimented with cleaning off the green the green area and it is true that sometimes if you keep doing that you'll end up getting muddy colors but if you do then you clean your palette and you start all over again but as you can see it's just given us a really nice wide range of beautiful colors and these are just a small snippet <laughs> a very very small snippet of some of the beautiful colors and mixes that you can make and I feel like I could literally spend all day just doing swatches of all these different colors my point is that 
you'll be surprised how many colors you can actually make with your current palette and a lot of the time you know i'm also guilty of this i will love to go and buy new colors and add them and and swatch and i think that that is wonderful and that is lovely however i think that it can also be really fun and really relaxing and really meditative to just sit back and get out your palette and just mix different colors and see what your palette can do and the kind of mixes that you can get and obviously i also love purple so i thought i would show you a few of the mixes so this is quin magenta mixed with ultramarine blue and this will granulate and you will see it will start looking a bit similar to the mineral violet which is why i was saying that i like the color but i do know that i can make it myself so if i want to replace one of the colors that might be one that goes i'll just do one here more of a nice range but equally sometimes i will get that with the indanthrone blue and make like really nice deep purples sky is your oyster <laughs> in a nutshell these are just some of the mixtures that i love going back to time and time again if that's something that you're interested in in terms of other mixtures that i tend to make then let me know down below in the comments and i can make that video but for now i just thought it would be fun for me to highlight my current go-to palette all the colors that i am using and just know where i'm starting off so that we can keep track and see how it changes in 2024 and there we have it. This is my current travel studio all round 2023 watercolor palette. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a wonderful, healthy, happy, creative new year. Thank you so much for watching, for all the kind comments, for all the encouraging support. It has been a roller coaster of a year with lots of ups and lots of downs. However, like having your support and having you on Kofi, having you on YouTube has made such a massive positive difference which I I can't thank you enough for like you have truly been a blessing and I really appreciate you and if you are watching this video for the first time then welcome to an absolutely amazing community <laughs> if you are still watching then you are a real MVP and I really appreciate you let me know that you are still watching by telling me if there are any colors that you would add to this palette if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely love this series of next ones where i highlight my favorite art supplies i hope that you have a wonderful happy healthy creative inspiring new year thank you so much and i will see you next week bye